So what's the problem, Brian? Well, I think you, if you sit down, yes. you'll find out pretty quickly what the problem is. It seems like I'm facing the wrong way. A tight squeeze. And I was on an airline the other day and the bathroom looked just like this, actually. What do you want to do? Well, we'd like to spin it if we could and have it a little more natural angle. Um, well, first I got to ask you, I wonder how this happened. It seems the logical place is this way. Right. Makes me suspect that there was a time that maybe somebody worked off of a wheelchair to come to here and slide because that's the logical place the wheelchair could come and you can come right onto it. Uh, that's very perceptive. The previous owner, in fact, was in a wheelchair. All right. So, all right. Well, if we wanted to spin a toilet, let me give you a little primer on Toilets 101. The standard roughing, the distance from the wall to the center of the pipe that goes underneath the toilet is 12 inches. So if I measure right here, you can see off the back wall, you see where the bolts are right here? Yep. That's 12 inches. That's a standard size toilet. Now, if we turned it, let's just measure what this dimension is right here. So do you see this? It's 14 inches. Mm. So now if we took this toilet and we turned it, instead of having a nice narrow gap back here, you'd end up with about two inches of space back here. But I think I have a solution for you. Great. All right, just set it right on the drop cloth. All right, here is your new toilet. A couple of important dimensions. And the first is the most important, and that's the 14 inch that we talked about, mm -hmm. so that we can go from off the wall to the bolt hole right here and have no gap in the back. Right. And the other is the height of the toilet seat. Look at your old toilet right here. This was a one piece toilet. The toilet seat was about 16 inches off the finished floor. This one is a higher height, it's about 18 inches to the finished floor, and that's more comfortable for most people, and also ADA compliant for wheelchair use right now. Right. All right, so now we got to get the water off and get this old toilet out. All right, just pull this straight up. All right, Brian, just take that side, would you? There we go. And let's go right onto the newspaper right there. Good. Down. Okay, so let's get the old wax ring off of the closet flange. All right, with all the wax removed, you can now see our closet bolts right here. Now, those are the two bolts that hold the toilet to the flange, and they have to be parallel to the back wall that it serves. So this is where it was, but now we need a pair of bolts to be right here off of the back wall at 14 inches. But look at this flange right here. There's no place, there's no keyway for the bolts to fit into this old flange. Now, if it had been used in modern flange like this, look at the difference. It would have had a place for the bolts right here, but it also had another set right here that would be perfect. But this one doesn't. Now, when this flange was first built, this used to swivel. Let me see if that will actually swivel for me. <clears throat> nope. All right, so that is not gonna swivel, so we're gonna have to build off of this flange. They make a couple of interesting accessories. So we could take something like this would let me secure this to the existing flange to give a new set of uh, keyway for the bolts which secure this down to both the floor and the flange. But look at this, here's another variation on it that I like. With this one, we put a wax seal down here, this would come down over top, secure down into the floor, and give us new bolts right here and a nice tight seal to the new toilet. I think this is the one we're gonna use, all right? Great. All right, so now we gotta make a seal here. So this is a wax ring and I've cut that in half right here because I don't need a whole big fat one. Yep. I just need a nice little seal right here. Okay, and now we're gonna place this on top. Okay, so we just squeeze out that wax as much as we can. I wanna get it as flush as I can. Okay, now we want these bolts to be parallel to that back wall. That looks pretty good right there. And now we're gonna drill into the tile with a masonry bit. So I'm using these masonry anchor screws. And I'm just gonna tighten them up evenly all the way around. I don't wanna over tighten it. I don't wanna over torque it with a drill either.
All right, so that's ready to go. But before I do, I want to just call out the water right here. Here's the water supply to the old toilet. It was roughed in for the original installation to the left of center as you're facing the toilet. Now, I could go to the trouble of cutting this off, drilling a new line coming up from the basement right here. But I'm actually going to leave this where it is, and I'll just run a longer flexible supply, and that'll go right behind the toilet up to the new supply. Sounds good. All right, I'm going to take that. I'm just going to set it right onto those bolts. Just see if I can guide it in. There we go. Okay. So now the connection here is there's a washer that has a right side up and a wrong, wrong side up. And that goes this way, a brass washer, a nut, should snug it up a little bit on each side, alright, I don't want to over tighten these, I want to do them equally, on this side it's the same, the right side up on the bottom washer, the brass washer, the nut, okay. All right, so now the cap will not sit down correctly because that thread is just too long. So I'll cut that with a mini hack. All right, so the water connection is just to make up this nut to the bottom of this shank. Just tighten it up clockwise. All right, we just turn the water on. And Brian, this toilet uses just under 1.3 gallons per flush. That old one was probably used like almost five. It was a one-piece toilet. That's fantastic. It'll save a lot of water. Great. All right, Brian, throw the tank cover on. Ready. Why don't you give it a test flush? We always let the homeowner do the honors. Outstanding. Outstanding.